In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. On this fifth Sunday of Lent, a week before Palm Sunday, and the beginning of our holiest week of the year, our readings focus on the passion of our Lord, and whether we are willing to follow them, or whether we fall into the trappings of secular society that wants us to live their way instead of God's way. Let us be strident living our Christian faith together here online and at our own home local parishes as we take a moment to call to mind our sins. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Santo Dios, Santo Poderoso, Santo Immortal, ten piedad de nosotros. Christe eleison, Christe eleison. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech thee, O Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself even to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they broke my covenant. And I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they have the need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from the least to the greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Create a clean heart in me, O Lord. Create a clean heart in me, O Lord. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness, in your greatness of your compassion. Wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Create a clean heart in me, O Lord. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Create a clean heart in me, O Lord. Give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall return to you. Create a clean heart in me, O Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the ones who were able to save him from death. And he was heard because of their reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, 
And they asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of the world will be driven out. When I am lifted from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, a hundred years ago or so, there was this English author and professor named C.S. Lewis who wrote a series of books, theological, pastoral, uh, children's books, for the sake of his readers. Uh, the Chronicles of Narnia is one of his most famous works that have been published and read throughout the world and movies have been made on those books. Uh, C.S. Lewis was a professor over in England who uh, dedicated his life to teaching the basics of the faith and the basics of his journey with God. How he lost his faith early in his life and how that faith turned back to him through the works of J.R.R. Tolkien and all the other professors that really brought him back on the straight and narrow path. He wrote this one book that I've used in my Death and Dying course called The Screwtape Letters. It's about uh, Uncle Screwtape and his pupil Wormwood, two associates of the devil who are trying to uh, convince people to walk the path to hell. Uncle Screwtape, the teacher, had instructed Wormwood that the road to hell does not have to happen with the great things of life, with the great tragedies. It's the small things in life, the small sins, that lead to the bigger ones. This is a quote from the book. The only thing that matters is the extent to which you separate someone from God. It does not matter how small the sins are, provided that when they are added up, the effect is to edge the person away from the light and out into the searing cold of nothingness. Murder is no better than bitterness, if bitterness can do the trick. Indeed, the safest road away from God is the gradual one. The gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turnings, without great events, without signposts. Suddenly you reach a destination not planned, but easily arrived at. I think Lewis is trying to tell us that sin is not necessarily a noun as much as it is a verb. To live a life of sin, to be uh, coaxed into the simple sins of life because society prefers to live that way, and then through the small sins and the acceptance and the embracing of the small sins, we end up uh, committing the larger ones. And before we know it, before we realized how hopeless our lives really are, we are well on our way to that slow, gradual, easy descent into hell, and then we're all going to have to be accountable for the acts that we have committed. It seems to me to walk the path of faith is a much more difficult road because it requires more diligence and it is the road less traveled. It's the road that uh, Jeremiah warns us that many of us have lived in the story of Jeremiah. The people have fallen. The people have turned away from God so completely that they were exiled from their promised land. Jeremiah's reading tells us that we need to put our faith back into God, that it is only God that can restore the covenant, God that can put everything back the way that it should be. 
and the Messiah, the new figure that comes in the New Testament, is one that's going to reestablish this kingdom, not the kingdom on earth, but the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom that will lead us and guide us into a way of right living. But that does require work. The problem is, while we are trying to live that kind of life, we get torn away by the secular world who keeps trying to convince us that God's way is not the right way, that their way, the way of uh, lust and fornication and greed and ego and whatever else it might be, those interior sins seem much more satisfying than eternal life and peace and the eternal gaze upon God. And what ends up happening then is when people suffer that way, then they've lost all their hope in God, they've lost their hope in life. That's when people start saying, I am a spiritual person, not a religious one. I believe in God, but I do not have to invest in my relationship with God. It is that kind of fallacy that ends up turning people into the other path and ends up making a person fall. That's why we come here today. I think to myself so many times in my priesthood, I have encountered people who uh, have been lost in their life, who have experienced so many troubles in their life. I was thinking about a funeral I celebrated some time ago for a man named John. John's life was absolutely horrible when he was young. His family, his friends, there was a great deal of abuse. The one person that gave him comfort in his life was his wife. But then when his wife died, he thought he lost everything. He thought he could not go on. I reminded myself when I was talking to John about Psalm 23, about the 8th chapter of Romans, nothing will separate us from God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. That we might abandon God, but God never abandons us. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only son, that anyone who believes in him might not die, but might have eternal life. And as our gospel reading tells us, if we have that faith in God, everything will be restored in this death of Jesus, this suffering for the sake of cleansing us of our sins, is not something that John looks at as a bad thing, but looks at it as a sign of glory. That book of glory, the suffering, passion, and resurrection of our Lord from the Gospel of John is a symbol of hope that God was willing to suffer for us because he loved us so well. That's what I tried to tell John during his time of grief. Another person I encountered was a woman named Annie, a teenager who took care of her younger siblings, who had everything in life going for her. She was an artist. She had this great youthful spirit. She was exceedingly popular, but on the inside was very lonely. And you know, I was thinking about that because I just did a confirmation treat for a group of kids in Morris, Illinois. And I was trying to teach them about parish community. No matter what happens in the world, no matter what happens after confirmation, even if people fall away from God, and there are so many, that they are always welcome back, that this is always our home. And if you have faith in God, if you have faith in this love, God is willing to accept us and to forgive us and to love us if we are willing to change our ways. And that's why I tell the kids that God will never abandon us even as we abandon God, certainly in the Old Testament and in many ways in the New. But Jesus has faith in us. Jesus has hope and love in us that we will change our ways and he was willing to die for us to give us the chance for eternal life. Yes, uh, Wormwood, the road to hell is very easy and is very uh, comfortable to walk, but it is also the road to our destruction. The road to Christ is a road of peace and love that we suffer much on earth because of that uh, method of life, that way of life that we wish to live. But in the end, there will be no more suffering, no more tears, no more sadness. All there will be was the presence of God in our life, and that is love. As we get closer to Passion Sunday, Palm Sunday, Holy Week, and the suffering and death of our Lord, let us realize that he did this for us because he loved us. Let us never take that love for granted. Let us realize the difference between God's love and the love of the secular world, which gives us great personal satisfaction, but is empty of the presence of the divine. Let us follow God with all our hearts, minds, and souls. Let us realize that that is the true path to eternal life. Let us embrace that love and share it always with the people that we meet. This is our prayer.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that God will hear us, we now offer our prayers for the church and for the world. For increased vocations to the diverse members that give life in the abundance of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For careful observance of fair laws by government officials and citizens, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence and fear, especially for those who are in refugee or prison camps, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For undaunted faith among the members of this assembly and in our elect, catechumens, and candidates who will receive the sacraments on Easter weekend, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, that they may find God's comfort in the hands of their caregivers. Especially today we remember those on our parish's sick list. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may find the promise of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions offered this last week, that they and their families may be embraced by God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of nations, your people know of your miracles. Hear the prayers of our hearts and grant them through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever with humble spirit and contrite heart, May we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord of my iniquity, wash me and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, 
they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celi et terra, Gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium fidei, mortem tuam annunciamus domine, Et tuam resurrectionem confitemur, donec venias. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Anne, St. Patrick, and with all your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of our Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Agnus Dei, qui tonis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tonis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tonis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, this weekend over at St. Patrick's Church in Moments at 10.30 in the morning, the 11 individuals who are receiving the Easter sacraments on April 3rd and 4th will be joining us for what is called the third scrutiny. Really a scrutiny is a community's way of praying for those who uh, wish to be part of our parish assembly, who have been learning about the basics of the faith, and whom we are supposed to support with our prayers and love. That is why we have been reinforcing and asking all of you to write letters of support to our RCI candidates. Eleven individuals and a couple babies are going to be receiving the sacraments on Easter Vigil and Easter Sunday. So I really would ask you, if you have the time, to please write a letter to them and tell them how much we care for them and support them. Please send those letters to St. Patrick's Church at 119 North Market Street in Moments, Illinois, 60954. I want to thank the Knights of Columbus for their great work in our fish fries and in our Irish dinner. Uh, they have been doing wonderful uh, work and ministry at our parish. Especially since the passing of Jack Noonan, we've needed uh, folks like the Knights to come forward and help us with our repairs and upkeep. And we certainly are very grateful for everyone who has helped us out during this time. Uh, next week is Holy Week, so I will be recording a whole slew of extra Masses for your benefit. From Palm Sunday to Holy Thursday to Good Friday to Easter Sunday. Father Michael uh, Majera and Daniel Lucetta of St. Joseph's Church in Rockdale were kind enough to join me in singing the Passion according to Mark for our Palm Sunday liturgy. Very much you are invited to join us at the parishes or to join us online and we'll do whatever we can to accommodate your needs. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. I invite you to bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what? At your prompting, they desire that they may receive your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless all of you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has ended. Now go in peace. Thanks be to God.